Welcome to the Robotics Through Science Fiction podcast. Today's podcast is about the automatic detective. It's a detective noir spoof and one of my favorite books for fun reading. We have here today the author, Lee Martinez, a fellow Texan. So Lee, tell us about yourself and your books. Uh, well, I'm a writer. <laughs> uh, been a professional writer for the last 12, 13 years. Um, and I write science fiction fantasy, um, and that's it. Um, uh, people kind of say, I'm kind of known for being funny, but I don't like being called a funny writer. But uh, I am, so there you go. I don't know. <laughs> Humorous sounds just so pompous, you know? It's kind of like a, a humor writer. It's going to be like Rory Blonde or someone who writes for The New Yorker. But I think it's just, just you know, like you and and people like John Scalzi, that you can just have a good time reading it. You know, it's not, it's not just this serious storm and drain stuff. So I like that. Well, people like it. I can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I can, but I choose not to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, a lot of your books are science fiction fantasy, and it seems like yeah. the automatic detective is a bit of a departure. So uh, why would you get into robotics on this one? Well, you know, this, the automatic detective is is very much a fantasy novel because it's it's not built on any kind of real scientific basis. In fact, it's it's deliberately. I always talk about how it's modeled after like old pulp magazines. So the the world they have in the automatic detective is not scientifically accurate, um, <laughs> and intentionally so. It's like I've said that before. Like this is a world where they have radio wristwatches, but nobody has a personal computer. And uh, where they have like weird flying cars or weird vehicles just because they wanted them. And you have robots, but somehow like computers are these big clunky machines. So it's sort of that, that weird paradox of, of the old uh, weird science stuff, which I loved. So uh, I love weird science uh, tropes and I love uh, uh, old detective tropes. So I just kind of want to put them together. So even though technically it's a science fiction novel, because it's, it, it's it's very some fantasy because the the world is deliberately not scientifically accurate, and I, I don't usually try to like I've written some other science fiction stuff, um, and I don't really usually worry too much about being accurate. But this is the one that's kind of very deliberately, like it's not how a world would really work, and we know it. But it's built on like what if the twenties was what if those old pulp covers were accurate? <laughs> I know that's what makes it so fun is that it's sort of like uh, I I think of it sort of as the love child of a. Uh, of uh, Garrison Keillor's Guy Noor, you know, all the pulp fiction and a little mm -hmm. bit of rules of super villainy with the, uh, the weird science that makes it. Mm -hmm. So can you describe for us Mac Megaton? And uh, was there a robot he was based on or anything or just he's, you just like Mac? He's actually based on a couple of things, but he's based on, I, I, I love like, uh, like the Maltese Falcon is one of my favorite books. And, and then that, you know, Sam Spade is not like a great detective in the sense that he's he doesn't figure things out. He just kind of punches his way through the problems and then quietly figures it out. But he's also based loosely on uh, the Thing from the Fantastic Four, who's like one of my favorite superheroes, because yeah. he's just this giant hulking like yeah. regular Joe, um, who's who's like part of this super science team. And you know he's 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 not really a regular Joe because he's a he's a test pilot. He's a cool dude, but. The way he handles himself is more like, oh, well, I can't, okay, I'll go punch that, you know, evil alien because somebody's got to do it. So Max kind of built on that. Like, in my mind, he looks a lot like the thing. He's just robot form. <laughs> and he's red. So, okay, that makes that yeah. makes sense. All the robots are big and red in yours. So as a writer, I mean, writing about robots, I mean, what makes you think of having a robot as a main character? Uh, I always like, I've always liked robots. Um I mean, I was a huge Transformers fan and all that stuff. Um, uh, the thing I really liked was the idea of, well, okay, first of all, I, 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 I mean, I've talked about this before in other interviews, is I really, when I write a story, I try to think of something that hasn't been done a million times before. And one of the things that always bugs me about like robot stories is they're either out to destroy mankind or out to become like people. And Mac, I was like, why would a robot that was intelligent enough really have that problem. I mean, there's a lot of disadvantages to being a human. And so I wanted to do a story where um, Mac is, he's a robot, but like robots are not evil. He's not an evil robot, but he's also not like a Pinocchio. He doesn't really 
he doesn't dislike biological entities, but he's also like, why would I want to be one? They're squishy and they're messy and they've got to handle all these biological needs. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. So I wanted to explore that idea of the non-evil robot who also is happy being a robot. <laughs> And uh, so that was a huge influence on this. And that's why like a lot of people even, I mean, I don't want to be that pretentious guy. It's like a lot of people don't get that novel, get the novel. But a lot of people don't get the novel. But um, in the novel, a big part of it is people are like, oh, it's about him learning to be human. And I'm like, no, no, it's about him learning to be comfortable with who he is because he's still got the problem we all have, which is he's built, he's, like we all got to, he doesn't know what his purpose in life is. So he has to figure it out. But, um, but he's not learning to be a better human. He's just learning to be comfortable with who he is and and enjoying who he is. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, th- that is a, such a good point about that is that uh, I am so tired of robot uprising books. Right. So, and one of the things I love, I don't know if you've read the Culture uh, series by Ian. Right. I haven't read them, but I've heard of them. Okay, yeah, and uh, it's it's also a little bit like Ancillary Justice, the Imperial Radish. Is it uh, the AIs are like and robots are like uh, people are interesting and they're kind of cool. And would never want to be one, you know. Right. And people are like, "Wow, AIs and robots are kind of cool," but would never want to be one. It's right. it's a really a nice harmony of, of that, rather than the uh, like you said, the Pinocchio syndrome, which got really annoying on Star Trek: The Next yeah. Generation. Just really, you know, the writers went to that one too many times with with data. But anyway, you can tell, you can tell that uh, people are, stories are written by humans because they're like. There's a machine and it wants to be a person. <laughs> you know, I started looking at science fiction on the robot stories to put together to, on, on what's realistic in them as teachable moments. And it turns out from the very beginning, and you know, we were starting with more of the Asimov type stories, they're about the robots and how would they actually work. And then about the late 70s and the 80s, when robot um, got, were, became common in manufacturing, it flipped to robots as a reflection of humanity. And we're, we're not exploring the science and the technology and the impact of the science and technology on us. It's more about, oh, they're a reflection of ourselves, which is great and can be done brilliantly, but you know, sometimes- it's not, it's not the default. And I think that's what, that's where I get a little frustrated is a lot of times in any kind of genre, whether it's science fiction, fantasy, or any, anything, you end up with a default setting and that, that is a problem. Yeah, I think, yeah, that really explains a lot for me. I think that's a great way of looking at it, Lee. So did you have any science or technology background or? No. <laughs> Do you have a robot? Do you have like a Roomba? Uh, I, did, I, I, I wish I could give you like a really cool, like, oh, I had this idea about none of it is built on any kind of scientific credibility. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be. I mean, it's a detective spook. It's such a yeah. Pulp Fiction, nor spoof. It's just delightful. I mean, I love, I know what Mac is going to say. It's almost like being at Rocky Horror where you can just shout out. And it's so perfect with the twist you put into it for what a robot would say or how the how Mac would view it. But you don't have to be, you know, a robot expert. But it's good, just good. Do you have a UAV or a Tesla? I mean, maybe. I don't. I am technically, well, I mean, the fact that when we started this interview, I had to like go get my laptop and try to fight it. And I'm using this on this tablet finding. Um, I am technically inadequate. The technology is not my friend. Someone helps me and then I, yeah, it works. I play like online games and I go online and all this stuff, but it's like if the computer starts giving me any hassle, I just immediately like, okay, you win computer. I want away, walk away. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I like all those things, um, but I just tend, I tend, I'm really bad about, first of all, I'm really bad about getting new things. And like when I have something that works. <laughs> so it's like, that's why my computer's always like a couple years old. Cause it's just like, well, it still kind of works. So I'm not great at technology. One day my car will break down and maybe I'll get something cool or I'll get like a room or something. But until then I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so excluding Mac, well, who's your favorite robot? Um, Oh, my favorite robot. There's a lot of great robots. Um, I mean, I really love, you know, uh, uh, I mean, since I grew up with the Transformers, and this was like one of my first things. I mean, I love all those guys. I mean, uh, you know, Grimlock and the Dinobots are probably my favorites just because they're dinosaurs. 
<laughs> dinosaurs, oh. robots, and in space. Yeah. I mean, that we right. get all three, you've got a home run, right? That's right. Uh, I also love, of course, you know, the classic, like that's the thing where they're talking in the novel and you mentioned it's like Gort from this oh, island earth. So I think that's a great, like, because the fact that Gort's just this en enigmatic, like super powerful robot that is actually in charge, you just find out later. Yeah, I, I, I personally think I would like Gort at this point in time. It's like, yes, we, we just need, you know, screw the United Nations, screw politics, just a large robot that just is no nonsense about it. Good. Yes or no, I'll That's fire right. you if the answer is no, you don't do that. Yeah, right. just seems very simple to me, very appealing. That's right. So are you going to run any more automatic detective stories? Are we going to get to see Mac um, more or his friends? I am not writing any more. Um, I don't have any plans in the future. Um, uh, who knows? Um, it's under development right now in certain areas to possibly like become a TV show, but I wouldn't hold my breath mm -hmm. on that. Yeah, um, that would be I mean, it, Yeah, it'd be cool if it happens, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I don't have any really major plans for that yet, but I mean, we'll see. I, I don't make, I, I kind of just one book at a time. <laughs> I understand. And speaking of your other books, if you had one non Mac Megaton book, which one would you recommend for us to read? Well, if you want science fiction, I would recommend uh, Emperor Mollusk, which is sort of, again, a pulp homage with uh, sort of my John Carter of Mars pulp <laughs> homage with a space squid who's like a super genius who conquers the earth and then and that's the backstory. And then he has to like fend off somebody trying to reconquer the earth. Um, uh, otherwise, just for my own, my own professional interest, I'd recommend uh, the Constance Verity trilogy, which I'm working on now. <laughs> oh, cool. So, uh, uh, and that one adds a little bit of everything. That one's like, she's like a pulp hero. There's a lot of pulp influences, but she's just like, she does science fiction stuff. She does horror stuff. She does detective stuff. She does everything that's kind of the, the, the shtick of that. Oh, that sounds fun. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. 